Corporate governance is the system by which business corporations are directed and controlled. It is the set of responsibilities and practices used by organizations' management to provide strategic direction, thereby ensuring goals are achievable, risks are properly addressed, and organizational resources are properly utilized. The main aim of corporate governance is to resolve the conflicting objective of exploiting available opportunities to increase stakeholder value while keeping the organization's operations within the limits of regulatory requirements and social obligations. The key knowledge statement is that a seesaw candidate must understand IT governance, management, security and control frameworks and related standards, guidelines, and practices. Top management will provide assurance to stakeholders that IT deployment is aligned with business vision, mission, and objectives by implementing an IT governance framework. A governance framework will comprise of strategic alignment, value delivery, risk management, resource management, and performance measurement. We will continue to learn about IT governance, security management, and control frameworks in this screen. Implementation of an IT governance framework will lead to an IT governance framework that enables stakeholders to be assured that IT strategy is wholly aligned to the business. Mitigation of risks in the organization through critical controls. Control determination by the risk it addresses. Management utilizing frameworks such as COBIT, International Standards Organization, ISO, among others, to set up good IT practices, monitor, and improve them. The IS Auditor using such frameworks to benchmark the practices of a particular organization. Let us focus on the main areas of coverage in the following screen. To cover this knowledge area, the CISA candidate should have a good grasp of information security governance, IS organizational structure and responsibilities, IS roles and responsibilities, sourcing practices, policies, reviewing contractual commitments, governance of enterprise IT, and performance optimization. We will look at some of the best practices for government enterprise IT in the next screen. Governance of enterprise IT governance integrates and institutionalizes good practices to ensure that the enterprise's IT supports the business objectives. The factors that have led to the rise in the importance of governance of enterprise information technology include business managers and boards are now demanding a better return on investment. There is an increasing concern over high expenditure on IT. Management is increasingly under pressure to meet regulatory requirements for IT, such as SOX, Basel II, for banking institutions, among others. The selection of service providers is a key management decision, especially when such a decision is being made with consideration to service outsourcing and acquisition. Increasingly complex IT-related risks, such as network security. Let us continue to learn about the best practices for governance of enterprise IT in this screen. IT governance initiatives that include adoption of control frameworks and good practices to help monitor and improve critical IT activities to increase business value and reduce business risk. The need to optimize costs by following, where possible, standardized rather than specially developed approaches the growing maturity and consequent acceptance of well-regarded frameworks, the need for enterprises to assess how they are performing against generally accepted standards and their peers also called benchmarking. In the next screen, we will learn about information security governance. Information security governance requires strategic direction and impetus within an enterprise. It requires commitment, resources, and assigning responsibility for information security management, as well as means for the board to determine whether its intent has been met.
The role of Board of Directors, BODs, and or senior management in ensuring information security governance is implemented include ensuring effective information security governance is achieved only by involvement of the Board of Directors and or senior management in approving policy, appropriately monitoring, and metrics as well as reporting and trend analysis. We will continue to learn about information security governance in the following screen. Members of the board need to be aware of the organization's information assets and their criticality to ongoing business operations. This can be accomplished by periodically providing the board with the high-level results of comprehensive risk assessments and business impact analysis, BIA. In the next screen, we will learn about the roles and responsibilities of Board of Directors in information security governance. To ensure proper information security governance, the board members should approve the assessment of key assets to be protected and that protection levels and priorities are appropriate to a standard of due care. The tone at the top must be conducive to effective security governance. It is unreasonable to expect lower-level personnel to abide by security measures if they are not exercised by senior management. Executive management endorsement of intrinsic security requirements provides the basis for ensuring that security expectations are met at all levels of the enterprise. Penalties for noncompliance must be defined, communicated, and enforced from the board level down. Let us look at an example of importance of information security in the following screen. Importance of Information Security Information security is about setting the right culture towards protection of information assets in an organization. It is difficult to convince employees to observe particular controls, such as need to periodically change their passwords, even on their personal email, and the CEO insists on not changing his or her password. Note that the requirement to change password after completing a given period is enforceable by the IS management from the server side or back end. We will learn about the roles and responsibilities of the senior management in information security management in the next screen. The roles and responsibility of senior management are as follows. The executive management in an organization has the key responsibility of implementing effective security management governance and defining the strategic security objectives of an organization. This focus and support must be carried in a continuous basis. The steering committee has the responsibility of focusing on all security aspects of an organization. The security committee should be representative of the respective groups or functions that are impacted by information security. This allows achieving of consensus and trade-offs on matters of information security, such as priorities, plans, risks, controls, etc., while allowing better communication. The Chief Information Security Offer, CISO, ensures that good information security practices are carried out within the organization, such as ensuring employees take care of their passwords. Let us learn about governance of enterprise IT and various management frameworks in the next screen. Following are some of the frameworks and standards for the governance and management of enterprise IT. COVID-5, ISO IEC 27001, ISO 27001, ITIL, IT Baseline Protection Catalogs or IT Grandschutz Catalogs. Information Security Management Model, ISM-3. ISO IEC 38500-2008, Corporate Governance of Information Technology. ISO IEC 20000. We will learn about each in detail in the forthcoming screens. Let us begin with COVID-5, ISO IEC 27001, and ITIL in the next screen. COVID-5 is the latest edition of the COVID series by ISACA. COVID stands for Control Objectives for Information and Related Technology. 
COVID is a good practice framework that supports IT governance and management in ensuring that IT is aligned with business so as to maximize the benefits. COVID-5 is generic and useful for enterprises of all sizes, whether commercial, not-for-profit, or the public sector. ISO IEC 27001, also known as ISO 27001, provides guidance on implementing and maintaining information security programs. This standard was initially published as British Standard 7799, or BS 7799. ITIL is a hands-on framework that provides a means of achieving operational service management of IT, developed by the UK Office of Government Commerce, OGC, with IT Service Management Forum. We will learn about IT baseline protection catalogs and ISM3, We'll continue to learn about governance of enterprise IT and various management frameworks in the next screen. IT Baseline Protection Catalogs, or IT Grandschutz Catalogs, is the collection of documents, over 3,000 pages, useful for detecting and combating security weak points in the IT environment. This framework is a collection by the German Federal Office for Security in Information Technology, FSI. Information Security Management Model, ISM3, is a process-based ISM maturity model for information security. Let us proceed to discuss ISO IEC 38500-2008 and ISO IEC 20000 in the following screen. ISO IEC 38500-2008 is a corporate governance of information technology framework for effective governance of IT. It assists those at the highest organizational level to understand and fulfill their legal, regulatory, and ethical obligations with respect to their organization's use of IT. This framework provides guiding principles for effective, efficient, and acceptable use of IT within their organizations. ISO IEC 20000 is a specification for IT service management that is aligned with ITIL's service management framework. You will now attempt a question to test what you have learned so far. In this topic, we will learn about the concepts under the Knowledge Statement or KS 2.2. Let us begin with IS Strategy, Standards, Procedures, and Policies in the following screen. The key knowledge area is to understand the purpose of IT strategy, policies, standards, and procedures for an organization and the essential elements of each. The key elements in this knowledge are to ensure IT governance is effective through a formal framework that consists of IT strategies, policies, standards, and procedures should be consistent with business requirements. It is also important to ensure effective management and monitoring of IT as well as ensure management has implemented effective controls over the decisions, direction, and performance of IT. To have a proper understanding of this knowledge area, the CISA candidate should ensure that they have a good grasp of governance of enterprise IT, best practices for governance of enterprise IT, and information system strategy. We will learn about information system strategy in the next screen. An information system strategy articulates the enterprise's long-term intention to use information system to improve its business processes based on the business requirements. When formulating the IS strategy, an enterprise must consider the following. Business objectives and the competitive environment. Current and future technologies and the costs, risks, and benefits they can bring to the business the capability of the IT organization and technology to deliver current and future levels of service to the business, and the extent of change and investment this might imply for the whole enterprise, cost of current IT, and whether this provides sufficient value to the business, and the lessons learned from past failures and successes. Let us look at some best practices for governance of enterprise IT in the next screen.
Governance of Enterprise IT, GEIT, implies a system in which all stakeholders, including the board, internal customers, and departments such as finance, provide input into the decision-making process. GEIT has become significant due to a number of factors, such as business managers and boards demanding a better return from investments, concerns over generally increasing level of IT expenditure, the need to meet regulatory requirements for IT controls in areas such as privacy and financial reporting, the selection of service providers and the management of service outsourcing and acquisitions, IT governance initiatives that include adoption of control frameworks and good practices to help monitor and improve critical IT activities to increase business value and reduce business risk. We will continue to look at some best practices for governance of enterprise IT in the following screen. The need to optimize costs by following, where possible, standardized rather than specially developed approaches. The growing maturity and consequent acceptance of well-regarded frameworks. The need for enterprises to assess how they are performing against generally accepted standards and their peers. Governance process should focus on monitoring, evaluation, and direction of the conformance and performance, the system of internal controls, and compliance with external requirements. We will look at IT governance focus areas in the next screen. The focus areas of IT governance are strategic alignment, value delivery, and risk management. Strategic alignment focuses on ensuring the linkage of business and IT plans by defining, maintaining, and validating the IT value proposition and aligning IT operations with enterprise operations. Value delivery is about executing the value proposition throughout the delivery cycle, ensuring that IT delivers the promised benefits against the strategy, concentrating on optimizing costs and proving the intrinsic value of IT. Risk management involves requirement of risk awareness by senior corporate officers, a clear understanding of the enterprise's appetite for risk, understanding of compliance requirements, transparency about the significant risk to the enterprise, and embedding of risk management responsibilities into the organization. You will now attempt a question to test what you have learned so far. In this topic, we will learn about the concepts under the Knowledge Statement, or KS 2.3. We will begin by looking at organizational structure and roles and responsibilities related to IT in the following screen. The key knowledge area for a CISA candidate is to understand organizational structure, roles, and responsibilities related to IT. Organizations must clearly define organizational structures which define responsibilities of major functions within an enterprise and how these structures ensure proper segregation of duties. Let us look at the main areas of coverage in the next screen. The key coverage areas for this knowledge area include IT governing committees, information security governance, organizational change management, IS roles and responsibilities, and IS organizational structures and responsibilities. Note that the CISA exam will not be testing specific job responsibilities as they may vary from one organization to another. However, the CISA candidate may be tested on the roles and responsibilities of business owners, information security and executive management functions as they are universal function. In addition, the CISA exam may test separation of duties, which is also referred as segregation of duties. Let us look at information security roles and responsibilities in this screen. Organizational structure charts provide a clear definition of the department's hierarchy and authorities. On the other hand, job descriptions provide IS department employees a clear direction regarding their roles and responsibilities. The system development manager is responsible for programmers and analysts who implement new systems and maintain existing systems. 
In an enterprise, a project manager is responsible for planning and executing IS projects and may report to a project management office or to the development organization. Additionally, he or she may have to carry out a number of duties that include utilizing budgets assigned for the delivery of IS initiatives, reporting on project progress to the IS steering committee, executing the vision of the IT strategy and IT steering committee by planning, coordinating, and delivering IS projects to the enterprise. We will learn about IS roles and responsibilities in the next few screens. Job descriptions provide IS department employees a clear direction regarding their roles and responsibilities. A service desk, also known as a help desk, is a unit within an organization that responds to technical questions and problems faced by users. Such questions and answers can be delivered by telephone, fax, email, or instant messaging. At times, service desk personnel may use third-party help desk software that enables them to quickly find answers to common questions. There should be a procedure to record the problems reported, solved, and escalated should be in place for analysis of the problems or questions. Such a procedure will help in monitoring the user groups and improving the Software Information Processing Facility IPF, services. There are various service desk activities which include acquiring software, SW, and hardware, HW, training end users to use hardware and software, informing the users of hardware or software problems, initiating changes to improve efficiency, determining the source of system problems. An end user is typically responsible for operations related to business application services. The term end user can be used to distinguish the person for whom the product system was designed from the person who programs, services, or installs applications, such as Financial Management Information System, FMIS, Customer Relationship Management, CRM, Enterprise Resource Management, ERP. To distinguish between a user and an end user, it is important to note that the term user is broader and could refer to administrative accounts and accounts to access platforms, such as an application account that accesses the database on behalf of an application, while an end user is a physical person that accesses systems. An end user support manager is usually responsible as a liaison between the IS department and the end users. Data manager is responsible for the data architecture in larger IT environments, as well as being tasked with managing data as a corporate asset. An information security management is a function that generally needs to be separate from the IS department and headed by a corporate information security officer. CISO. The CISO may report to the CIO or have a dotted line, indirect reporting relationship to the CIO. It is worth to note that even when the security officer reports to the CIO, there is a possibility of conflict since the goals of the CIO are to efficiently provide continuous IT services, whereas the CISO may be less interested in cost reduction if this impacts the quality of protection. Quality Assurance Manager is responsible for negotiating and facilitating quality activities in all areas of information technology. Vendor and Outsourcer Management There has been a general increase in outsourcing, including the use of multiple vendors, such as those for software development, equipment maintenance, printing services, online payment services, infrastructure services, ISP, etc. A number of dedicated staff may be required to manage the vendors and outsourcers, including performing the following functions. Acting as the prime contact for the vendor and outsourcer within the IS function. Providing direction to the outsourcer on issues and escalate internally within the organization and IS function monitoring and reporting on the service levels to management, review changes to the contract due to new requirements, 
and obtain IS approvals. Infrastructure Operations and Management An operations manager is responsible for computer operations personnel, including all the staff required to run the Computer Information Processing Facility, IPF, efficiently and effectively. Such activities include computer operators, librarians, schedulers, and data control personnel. The Information Processing Facility, IPF, includes the computer, peripherals, magnetic media, and the data stored on the media. IPF constitutes a major asset investment and impacts the enterprise's ability to function effectively. The computer room should be secured and only authorized personnel should have access. No one except operations personnel should have access to the IPF. Media management is required to record, issue, receive, and safeguard all program and data files that are maintained on removable media. Data entry is critical to the information processing activity. Data entry can include batch entry or online entry. The systems administrator is responsible for maintaining major multi-user computer systems, including local area networks, wireless local area networks, wide area networks, personal area networks, storage area networks, intranets and extranets, and mid-range and mainframe systems. Security administration begins with management's commitment. Management must understand and evaluate security risks and develop and enforce a written policy that clearly states the standards and procedures to be followed. The duties of the security administrator should be defined in the policy. To provide adequate segregation of duties, this individual should be a full-time employee who may report directly to the infrastructure director. Quality assurance personnel usually perform two distinct tasks, quality control and quality assurance. Quality control, QC, is responsible for conducting tests or reviews to verify and ensure that software is free from defects and meets user expectations. This could be done at various stages of the development of an application system, but it must be done before the programs are moved into production. Quality Assurance, QA, in itself helps the IS department to ensure that personnel are following prescribed quality processes. For example, QA will help to ensure that programs and documentation adhere to the standards and naming conventions. Systems Analysts They are the specialists who design systems based on the needs of the user and are usually involved during the initial phase of the system development life cycle, SDLC. Security Architects They evaluate security technologies, design security aspects of the network topology, access control, identity management, and other security systems, and establish security policies and security requirements. One may argue that systems analysts perform the same role as that of the architect. Applications Development and Maintenance Application staff are responsible for developing and maintaining applications. Infrastructure Development and Maintenance staff are responsible for maintaining the system software including the operating system. Network administrators are responsible for key components of this infrastructure, routers, switches, firewalls, network segmentation, performance management, remote access, etc. So far, we have learned about various roles and responsibilities of information security. Let us proceed to the next screen and discuss the segregation of duties or SOD matrix. This table illustrates an example of segregation of duties matrix. The rows illustrate various IS duties, while the same are replicated at each column. Where there is an X mark, it means the duties are incompatible to each other, and therefore one individual should not perform this role. For example, an individual with the role of a control group, CG, should not be a system analyst, SA. A system analyst should also not perform the role of a quality assurance person. It is recommended to take a look at this matrix as it is important for a CISA candidate. 
you will attempt a question to test your knowledge in the next screen. In this topic, we will learn about the concepts under the Knowledge Statement, or KS 2.4. In the following screen, we will look at the development and maintenance of IT strategy, procedures, standards, and policies. The key knowledge area here is to have a grasp of the processes for the development, implementation, and maintenance of IT strategy, policies, standards, and procedures. The key concepts here are to ensure that IT strategies must be defined on business objectives and that IT strategy should continue to address both emerging and developing business risks. The main areas of coverage include strategic planning, information security governance, and information security management. We will learn about strategic planning in the next screen. Information systems strategic planning relates to the long-term path an enterprise wants to take in leveraging information technology for improving its business processes. Strategic planning should ensure that the plans are aligned and consistent with organization goals and objectives, and that the enterprise's requirements for IT systems and the IT organization's capacity to deliver new functionality through well-governed projects are considered. The CISA candidate should understand and pay full attention to the importance of IT strategic planning, taking management control practices into consideration. Let us look at information security governance in the next screen. Information security governance is focused on confidentiality, availability and integrity of information, continuity of services, and protection of information assets. The key outcomes of effective security governance should include strategic alignment, risk management compliance, and value delivery. The outcomes are enabled through the development of three things. One is performance measurement, which measures and monitors information security and report on it to ensure that smart, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound objectives are achieved. Two is resource management, which ensures information security infrastructure and knowledge effectively and efficiently utilized. And finally, is process integration, which ensure organizations' management assurance processes are integrated within security so as to improve overall security and operational efficiencies. The next screen will focus on information security governance framework. The information security governance framework will generally consist of a comprehensive security strategy intrinsically with business objectives and governing security policies that address each aspect of strategy, controls, and regulation. Other factors are a complete set of standards for each policy to ensure that procedures and guidelines comply with policy, an effective security organizational structure, void of conflicts of interest, and institutionalized monitoring processes to ensure compliance and provide feedback on effectiveness. We will look at information security management in the next screen. Information security management provides the lead role to ensure that organizations' information and information processing resources under its control are properly protected. Information security management is achieved through performance measurement, which entails developing business impact analysis, disaster recovery plan, and business continuity plans. The major component in establishing such a connection involves application of risk management principles to assess risks to IT assets, mitigate these risks to an acceptable level. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.